So this video is based on the financial units for business studies and it's looking at ratio analysis. The, the, the question actually only asks about liquidity, but it has enough information within the case study where you could have a look at profitability as well. So within this um, case study, I will be considering the profitability ratios, but when I'm looking at the actual exam question, I'd be looking at liquidity. So I would encourage you to pause the video and just to read over the case study to give you a good understanding. Um, but I'll quickly summarise. Um, so first of all, it's based on um, Sophie, who works with her parents. Her parents have owned a shop, but they've also decided to buy a plot of land and convert each of the three bands on that plot of land into two cottages suitable for the tourist uh, for tourist accommodation. So they are going to be operating in the obviously in the tourism industry. Um, Whilst they've been operating, so for example in the summer months of 2005, the, occup uh, the occupancy rates peaked at 100% shows that during the seasonal months the business is performing very well. Uh, they did have a, sorry, they do have a restaurant which originally was only for the the B and B side to it, so it's for the the guests staying at the um, the accommodation. But since 2003, they've actually opened it up to uh, the general public for lunch and dinner. Now, in 2007, Sophie's parents retired, leaving Sophie with responsibility for both the shop, which they originally owned, and obviously this new venture. So the first option is, is rather a safe option, and it's looking at their present focus. So it's not to change the business too much, but I suppose be a little bit leaner. So in terms of um, improving cost control and to try and boost profitability. Now, the way they'll do that is by creating a more flexible workforce to reduce costs, but also try and gener generate higher levels of revenue by the marketing of the business. The other options relate to a unique selling point of ecotourism. Now, I think Sophie is in favour of that, but her parents are not because they believe it to, to be a passing fashion. Option two is much more significant, and it's to do with Sophie's passion for ecotourism, and it's to develop an education centre, and it's looking at the sustainability of um, this type of industry, and it will require quite a lot of investment. So the accommodation will have to be modified. It, to make it more energy efficient and carbon neutral. They'll also um, change the barns and they'll actually create an education center and they'll actually reduce the operations of the restaurant as well. So this would be a little bit riskier. The third option is going to be the most expensive. And as it says, that it'll require substantial investment. And the reason for that is because they're going to continue with this, I suppose, unique selling point of uh, ecotourism, but they're going to be tagged at a much more higher income. So I mean, that's, that's got the opportunity to add value and maybe generate higher revenues, but it is going to increase the cost of sales. For example, high quality locally sourced produce will have to be offered. Um, they'll also be, it'll require expenses in terms of their, to their existing facilities, and they'll also have to recruit and train new staff because they'll be offering new services such as beauty treatment, saunas, meditation, and yoga classes. The investment suggests that it's going to come from uh, loans and credit uh, because it says it will significantly increase the gearing of the business. And the final option is just to sell it. Okay, so concentrate on the shop, provide financial security for her parents, uh, but, but obviously not to function uh, and not to operate in the tourism industry anymore. Now, the first bit of financial information we're given is actually an income statement. Um, even though the question I've already told you concentrates on liquidity, I don't think there's any harm in just working out the margins for 2005 and 2008. Now, just remember, often in financial questions, they will want a comparison. And the fact that they've given you two different year groups, and they've, they've done the same for the balance sheets as well, they obviously want you to compare the progress that the uh, the the barn uh, accommodation is made from 2005. So we're just going to work out the gross profit margin and the profit margin really quickly. So from looking at the data, we can see that in 2008, the sales revenue has fallen and the cost of goods sold has increased. So we know that the gross profit margin is going to have fallen in 2008 and we can see it has. So in 2005, if we do um, our calculations, we should get 94.03. So we get our gross profit and we divide it by our sales revenue uh, and therefore 94.03, but the gross profit margin in 2008 is 92.36%. So 
So for the profit margin, uh, again, you can see that in 2008, expenses increased, but also interest increased. I know tax was reduced, but I've, I've decided to go for the net profit after interest and tax for this profit margin. So in 2005, uh, I got 32.05%, but in, in 2008, it's gone down uh, more significantly than gross profit, actually, in terms of gross profit margin. And the profit margin is 23.50. So just a reminder of how to calculate this, you get your, uh, your gross profit divided by your sales revenue uh, times by 100 to get your gross profit margin and you get your uh, your net profit divided by sales revenue times by 100 to get your profit margins. So as I said before the question is related to liquidity and they've also given you a balance sheet for 2005 and a balance sheet for 2008. This is the 2005 balance sheet and what they're wanting you to do is use uh, liquidity ratios. Now for A-level, all you have to do is the current ratio, but for IB, you'd have to do the acid test ratio as well. So in terms of the current ratio, all you'd have to do is get your current assets and divide it by your current liabilities. So if we consider the current assets of 7,000, obviously there's uh, the stock, which we'd, we deduct when we're looking at acid test. There's debtors, so they're owed money um, from, uh, well, from customers. There's also cash that they've got, uh, which they haven't spent, or they might have no intention of spending. And then their current liabilities, they've got no short-term borrowing, uh, and they've got creditors. They do owe their, uh, their suppliers uh, 4,000 euros. Now, their current ratio is 1.75 euros to one. Now what that means is for every one euro of liability, uh, or current liability, they've got one euro 75 to pay that off. So again, that's, in, that's a really strong position. They're very, very liquid. Now to em emphasize this further, we can have a look at the acid test ratio. Now again, this is only for IB, but if we deduct the, uh, the stock from it, we've got 5,000 now instead of the 7,000. Um, so 5,000 divided by the 4,000, we've got 1.25 to 1. So even without stock, they are still liquid, which again emphasizes how strong they are uh, at this current position. Now, there's advantages to that, but there's actually consequences as well. And we'll look at that more so when we actually have a look at the exam question. So this is the 2008 one, and straight away we can already see uh, differences. So we can see in terms of the current liabilities, short-term borrowing is now at 15,000 euros. So it's significantly increased. So that's going to have a massive impact on the liquidity straight away. And we can already we can see that their current assets is, is lower than their current liabilities. So again, that suggests that they are not going to be liquid. So let's work out the current ratio, and let's work out the asset test ratio as well. So again, if we have a look at the current ratio of 10,000 divided by 18,000, we can see 0.56 to 1. So that suggests for every 1 euro of, of current liabilities, they haven't actually got enough current assets to, to, to meet that financial obligation. So that is definitely worrying, and it shows that they are not liquid at this moment in time. And obviously, you'd expect it to be worse um, when we consider the deduction of stock, but it also shows that they have got a, a lot more stock than they did in 2005. I mean, if we consider the current assets, actually, it's, it's increased since 2005, but the issue is the short-term borrowing. Now, the short-term borrowing might have long-term impacts, though, and it could have long-term gains. So, again, there's obviously a worrying sight of these ratios, but it doesn't, it's not all doom and gloom. There might be actually some benefits from this, so we'll, we'll delve into that now when we have a look at this question. So the first question was simply asking you to calculate the current ratio um, and the acid test ratio. For, for AQA, it would just be the current ratio, but we've done that. So we, we've answered this question already. That can be ticked. So now we need to look at the next one, and that's to analyze the reasons for the changes in liquidity positions. So uh, this is where I'm going to write a model on Sifia you now. So my first point is based on 2005, and it's looking at how liquid they are. So I have said that they're in a very strong financial position, and if they do experience any issues, any financial difficulty, they should have enough current assets to help them to solve it. However, the consequences of having um, such a strong liquidity is the opportunity cost. What could they be spending, for example, this large amount of cash that they've got? Could they be spending that on investment opportunities? Could they be using that to advance the business even further? Instead, what they're doing is just, they're just storing it and they're not using it efficiently. 
So my second argument is, however, in 2008, it's a complete contrast to their situation in 2005. They're not liquid and have a current ratio of 0.56 to 1, and therefore unable to meet their financial obligations. The biggest cause of this is their short-term borrowing, as most other components of their current assets and liabilities have actually improved. Since 2005, um, so in terms of their creditors have improved, and their stock has improved, and so on. So actually, the only real... Uh, sorry, the only real issue with their balance sheet is their short-term borrowing, um, which is obviously, it could bring about liquidity problems in the short term, but obviously why have they borrowed? And that's where your counter-argument has to come in. Maybe they've borrowed for, for long-term gains. So it depends on the reasoning for the short-term loan. Uh, the short-term loan has been granted for favourite investment opportunities relating to investment in their new direction, which might bring long-term benefits and increase profitability. So yes, in the short term, it might cause problems, but you, you never know. This borrowing might have been carried out to help with their long-term prospects.